Welcome to part 5 of the Underwater World Shaders tutorial by Peerplay. In the previous part we've created the underwater image effect and in this part we will continue working on the post-processing image effect using the camera depth buffer. We'll create a distance based image effect and we'll also create our custom fog image effect to use in our scene. We'll start where we left off in part 4 and we're going to set public variables so we can set the material of the shader that we created for our image effect. So let's go over to the camera and double click on the underwater effect. Now let's create some public variables so we can control the underwater effect shader. So let's create a public float and we're going to call this float the pixel offset. Now let's add another float and we'll call this the noise scale. Now let's add a public float and we'll call this the noise frequency. And we'll use one more float and that flow will be the noise speed. Now I've written these at separate lines so we can set the range for each of the floats. So I'm going to say range. And the pixel offset will be between 0 0.001 to 0.1. Now let's set a range for the other ones as well. We'll do a range between 0.1f to 20f. And we can do the same for the frequency and for the noise as well. I'll set the noise at 0 0.1 to 30. Now we need to apply these variables to the material. So in the update, we're going to say that a material dot set float and which float are we going to set? We're going to set the noise frequency. Make sure that you use the same spelling as you did in the shader. And we're going to set that to the noise frequency. Now let's copy paste this line because we need to set three more variables. So the second one is called noise speed, the noise scale, and this one is called the pixel offset. Now the noise speed is going to be noise speed, noise scale is going to be noise scale, and pixel offset is going to be underscore pixel offset. And now with these in place, we can change the post-processing effects in the editor. So let's save this, go back to Unity. And now if we change these variables, you can see the result directly into the scene view. So let's put up the pixel offset, noise scale a little bit higher, frequency higher, and the speed a little bit higher. And now you can see the effect here in the scene view. Now the goal of this part is to create a distance based image effect. For this, we need to use the camera depth buffer which holds information on how far things are from the camera. To practice with this, we will be using a new image effect, creating colored fog, and once we have that working, we can apply the same logic to the underwater effect. Let's create a new C-sharp script, and we'll call this the fog effect. Now go to the camera, and we're going to add the fog effect to the camera. Now let's untuck the underwater effect and we're going to open up the fog effect. Now the fog effect will be an image effect as well so we're going to copy paste a few things from the underwater effect. So let's get this first line put that above there. We'll also get the material. Now we don't need these values but we do need the on render image so we'll copy paste that into the fog effect. Now we have to specifically tell the camera to render its depth, so we got to do that. So in the start, we're going to say get component and we're going to talk to the camera. And we'll get the depth texture mode and we're going to set that depth texture mode to a depth texture mode of depth. This will make sure that the camera output will render its texture into is on render image including the depth. Now that that's done let's save that script and go back to Unity. Now we also need to create a new shader for the fog effect so let's go to shaders and I'm going to duplicate the underwater image effect so control D and now we have our new file and I will call this the 
fog shader. Now let's right click on the fog shader and we're going to create a material based on this fog shader. Fog material. Let's put the fog material into the materials folder. Now you'll notice that this screen is still black so let's go over to the camera and on the fog effect we still need to set the material so let's drag and drop this fog material onto this material. Now let's go over to shaders and we're going to adjust our fog shader. Now let's remove a few things that we don't need from the underwater image effect and first of all let's change this name to fog effect. Let's remove all of these properties from the noise scale, frequency, speed and pixel offset because that's what we used for the underwater image effect. We'll also remove these two lines. Let's remove these as well. Now let's scroll down and we can remove everything that's here and we can rewrite it. Let's keep return call. Now we need to implement the camera depth texture into our shader and to do that we can use a built-in shader variable and that is called the camera depth texture. So let's add a sampler 2D of camera depth texture. So above here we're going to say a sampler 2D and we'll call this the camera depth texture. The next thing we'll do is we're going to declare a float value inside the frag which we'll call the depth value in which we'll store the depth of everything on the camera. And I want this depth value to become a value between 0 and 1 based on the distance to the far plane of the camera. And the way we can do this is by using the linear 01 depth and that is giving a high precision value from the depth texture and it returns a corresponding linear depth in the range between 0 and 1. And we need to input in here a texture. So let's write out linear 01 depth. And in this parameter we need to look up a specific coordinate on the camera depth texture. And to do that we can use the function text2d projection. So the text2d proj performs a texture lookup with a projection in a given sampler. So that requires two different parameters. The first parameter is the sampler 2D, which is the camera depth texture that we already created. And the second one is a flow tree, which is the coordinate system. So let's write out text 2D projection. And the first thing is going to be the camera depth texture. And for the second parameter, we're going to use another built-in function. And that is going to be the unity projection coord. And that is giving a four-component vector returning a texture coordinate suitable for projected texture reads. So let's write that out. Unity in capitals underscore projection underscore coord. And we're going to open that. And in here, we're going to get the i.screenPos. Now, this entire texture 2D projection is outputting a float4 value, and we only need to have one parameter of the RGBA, and we're going to get the R value of this. Now, close this one off, and now we've got our depth value. Now, we want to return the depth value so we can see it in our game. So instead of returning the call that doesn't really exist anymore, we're going to return the depth value in a fixed 4 color. So fixed 4, and for the R, G, and B values, we're going to get the depth value. So depth value for R, depth value for G, and depth value for B. And that should create a grayscale. So let's save this shader and go back to Unity. Now back in Unity you'll notice that it does work, but we see just a plane, and we don't see the tessellated plane. And that is because the camera is in forward rendering mode, and if we switch the camera to deferred render mode, then we'll see the hills, and we see the depth of everything. So if I change the far plane further, you'll see that the values change based on that. So if you want to use this way of getting the depth, you can use it on anything but not on tessellated objects. So if I create a sphere in here, then it will 
work on the sphere. Let's increase the sphere size a little bit more so we can see it. Put it more to the top and we can see it in our view. Now let's change back to forward. Now you'll notice that in the forward render mode it does get the sphere but it doesn't get the plane that is tessellated only the plane itself and not the tessellated plane. So for this example we'll change to deferred and let's remove the sphere. Now for the next step let's add a color to our depth value instead of this grayscale. So let's scroll to the top and we're going to add a property and we'll call this property the fog color and we'll name this fog color and it's going to be a color and by default it's going to be one 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 now let's declare this fog color in the subshader as well so we're going to say a fixed four and we'll call that fog color now let's scroll down and we're going to create a new fixed four and we'll call this the fog color and that is going to be the fog color multiplied by the depth value and we'll change the return to the fog color so let's remove this and change this to returning the fog color let's save this and go back to unity so back in unity you'll see that nothing has changed because the fog color is still white so let's select the fog material and we're going to change this fog color and now you'll see that when we change the color everything will be colored to that color now at this point you only see the depth of the camera and we don't see anything of this material or anything of the scene and we want to combine this color with everything that you would normally see if I turn off the fog so we're going to combine this with the fog so we'll see it actually as some fog so to do this we're going to create a new fixed four and this fixed four will be called the coal which is the color of everything that you would normally see and we'll also use a text to the projection for this and for this we'll just get the main text and the i dot screen pose now to apply the fog color to the color of the main text we're going to return a lerp between the color to the fog color and we're going to use the depth value as the lerp parameter so we're going to return lerp from call to fog color and we'll use the depth value now let's save this and go back to unity and now you'll notice that the colored fog is applied to the original scene pretty cool right and we can adjust the far plane to more near or further away and now with the fog working we can also add a color to this fog effect so we can change it in the inspector so let's do that and we're going to add a public color and we'll call that the fog color and in the update we're going to say that the material dot set color and we're going to set the color of the fog color to the fog color in the script now let's save this and go back to unity and now back in unity we can simply change the color here to anything and that will change the fog color in the scene so I'm going to change it to a little bit greenish so that looks a little bit like it's underwater and now we can also combine the fog effect with the underwater effect but make sure that it is in the correct order because everything from these components will be executed in order so we're going to place this one above the underwater effect so first we're going to apply the fog and then we'll apply the underwater effects so if I'm going to play this you can see that it's foggy and it's also applying the underwater effects so at this point the fog distance is based on the far plane of the camera 
In the next part we will make the fog independent of the far playing distance. So we can manually set a starting distance from the camera and the size of the fog. We will then use the knowledge we have from creating the fog to apply to the underwater effect so that the noise displacement is distance based. This tutorial series is made possible by the amazing patrons at my Patreon. If you would like to support me creating free Unity tutorials about audio visuals, algorithms and shaders, you can become a patron as well. You will then get access to all exclusive source file content of the tutorials. Go to patreon.com slash peerplay for more information. Special thanks to Devin the Dude and Derek Vechter. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. If you would like to stay updated to new release tutorials, subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on. Hope to see you again in the next part. Happy coding!